Hi everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel, The Yen and the Book Hunt. I apologize in advance if I sound a little stuffy, but I've been battling a cold that I just cannot seem to shake. So I kind of feel clogged up and I sound a bit stuffy, but I do feel good enough to at least record my recent reads. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm not going to make it too long because most of the books that I read this month are already included in a previous video that I did where I did the wrap up for the Romance Takeover Readathon that I participated in. So I'm going to link that one up in the cards and also below in the description box if you want to check it out. For those books I'm just going to mention the tropes and uh, the star rating that I gave them. And I'm just going to go ahead and talk about the books that I haven't discussed yet first. Um, I had a couple of interesting books that I picked up, a couple of hits, a couple of misses. So let me just dive in and tell you which books I read in the past couple of days, weeks, two weeks. <laughs> The first book I'm going to talk about is by Tay Monet. It's called Remember the Time. And I believe this book came on my radar because Jess from Peace Love Books had mentioned on Instagram that she was going to pick it up. And when I looked up the synopsis for it, I was like, okay, I, I want to give this one a try because it's an amnesia romance. And I've told you before in my least favorite tropes that I actually don't like amnesia romances, but I'm the type of stubborn person who always want to try something that I don't typically like to see if it's going to be the exception to the rule to see if it's going to surprise me in some way so uh, because amnesia romances are not very easy to come by I was like okay I'm definitely wanting to try this one out and the book starts off with two people who are happily engaged they I believe are at a restaurant having a nice meal they step into their car drive off and then they're in this car crash now after the car crash um, the woman she gets amnesia and because her family has never liked her fiance they kind of whisk her away and move to another place where he doesn't have any access to her so they essentially don't see each other anymore and because she doesn't remember that she has a fiance she doesn't know that she's missing on someone in her life so she kind of embarks on a completely new life that is created for her by her family by her mother essentially and years go by uh, she's already engaged to someone else but she goes to the town where she was living with her fiance and she meets up with him again by chance and she feels that there is a connection with him and she finds out through her best friend then that um, not everything is as it seems uh, or as is presented by her parents so yeah this is the kind of amnesia romance that i typically don't like uh where there is a lot of lying to the person or holding back information from the person uh who has amnesia so having amnesia is something very specific so you don't want to tell the person what their reality is because you need for them to remember their own memories but at the same time, you shouldn't present false information to them because that would confuse them even more. And this is what the mother does. She basically manip manipulates her daughter into thinking something that is not true. So this kind of manipulation really works on my nerves. And I'm like, no mother should ever be allowed in the vicinity of their children if they're manipulative enough to create a completely new reality for them uh, just because it suits them better so yeah it kind of irked me that this happened so yeah I gave this book three stars because it wasn't bad I did finish it and I did like how uh, the couple reconnected once they met up again but her whole relationship with her parents was just I, I I really don't like this kind of a relationship. So yeah, I give this one three stars. If you like amnesia romances, you should de definitely check this one out. So at some point last year, I picked up a book because I was looking for romances, sports romances specifically, that have different kinds of sports in them. So not the typical NFL, NHL, you know, soccer kind of romance. And I found one by Joe Brashier, uh, which was focusing on a surfer 
and later on I found out that it's actually a series and I really like that one I gave that one four stars so when I saw that Storytel has the second and the third book I knew immediately that I would pick up both of the books so I picked up number two in the series it's called the Aloha series and the book is called Try Me and this book involves one of the friends uh, out of the friend group who grew up in Hawaii um, who all went through a very traumatic event. They lost a friend of theirs um, during a surfing incident. And the hero in this one, Declan, he basically, after the death of their friend, goes into a spiral. He starts drinking heavily and he crashes his car, um, which is kind of a wake-up call for him that he's not doing well and he should leave where he is because he's not dealing well with the situation and he gets the opportunity to get signed with an agent to go to the mainland to the states where he's going to compete professionally in surfing and that's what he does and he becomes a big name in the circuit in the meantime he meets a woman pearl she is a waitress at one event that he's um that he's at and he actually finds out that she's a, a surfer as well. He's immediately intrigued by her because she puts up a front with another guy. She punches another guy when he's trying to hit on her. And they go on this little adventure, one or two day adventure, where they go surfing uh, at a bunch of beaches. Um, and he sees that she is absolutely amazing, maybe even better, better than he is. So he wants to give her the opportunity if he can to uh get her to compete as well so he involves his agent who is a complete sleazeball and the agent wants them to fake date for specific purposes and wants them to compete in hawaii even though he hasn't been back in a couple of years time so this is where their story starts off they need to fake date um, they also have this competition that they need to prepare for. Declan also needs to kind of uh, meet up with all his friends with whom he hasn't had any contact in all these years. And I, I really loved it. I think that this series specifically, the first book, but also this one is so extremely atmospheric. I, I kind of really felt like I was in Hawaii myself when I was reading um, a lot of the descriptions and everything that it's presented it's by the way set in the 50 in the 60s uh, is it the 60s or the 70s i'm not sure um in the states and it, it just felt like i was in that time at that place and it was beautifully written so i gave this one four stars the next book that i picked up is a fantasy uh book that i don't know where I found it from like how it came on my radar but I just saw it and I saw that I don't know for some reason it reminded me of the Hunger Games kind of so I was like maybe I'm going to like this it's called Light Lark and it's by Alex Astor I'm going to read out um, the synopsis of what I've written down because I find it very difficult to describe fantasy books <laughs> so every hundred years on the island of Light Lark, um, there appears to be this event called the Centennial. And it's a deadly game that only the rulers of six realms are invited to play. We have like nightlings, starlings, moonlings, wildlings, and another couple of, so two other realms. Uh, Isla Crown is the young ruler of Wildling, a realm of temptresses cursed to kill anyone they fall in love with and basically she goes to this deadly game with the intention to win it because she wants to save her realm as well as her best friend's realm and in the meantime when the game progresses they find out that this may be the last game that they get to play because there is uh, a fear that something bad is going to happen and that no one will survive so there's a lot going on a lot of action but for some reason i really did not love it as much as i thought that i would um the romance was kind of predictable for me and i didn't feel a very good connection between the heroine and the two respective love interests within the book and i gave it three stars I don't think it's a bad book per se, but 
mm, I've just read better with this type of a plot so yeah it wasn't the favorite of mine and I don't think I'll continue on with the series because I think there's going to be a second book so yeah I don't think I'll continue on. Next up I'm going to talk about a short novel called Book Boyfriend. It's by Chris Ripper and this book I picked up because it sounded really good like when I explain it now I think you'll find that it sounds really good but unfortunately I didn't love it. We have our hero PK he is um, kind of a lowly kind of a junior editor at this publishing house but he has always wanted to write a novel. He has made a lot of progress in writing all kinds of stuff but never a full-length novel and um, the interesting thing within the plot is that he's always been in love with his best friend Art and his best friend has just recently broken up with his boyfriend and needs a place to stay so PK is all the more excited that Art can go ahead and stay with him for a while. So the two of them have been best friends for a long time so he has been pining for his best friend for a long time and when he's listening to how Art is processing the breakup he's like okay so Art really needs someone who is very romantic and PK is the furthest thing from romantic that you can imagine. Um, so the thing that he decides to do is he decides to write their love story into a novel but he doesn't tell Art, he kind of wants it to be a surprise and he thinks that this is going to be the, the grand gesture that is going to win Art over and this is how the story progresses basically. Now. In theory, it really sounds good, but in um, actual practice, it wasn't very good because this book sounded like the longest kind of monologue ever. We were only in the head of BK. We on only kind of got all the internalization of the events that were happening and almost never got actual conversations between the characters. Only at the last scene did we get an actual conversation of... Um, how everything was perceived by the other person and by that time I was so over listening to what is in PK's head that I was like okay I, I really don't like this guy so I, I essentially don't want Art to get with him uh, because he really sounded like almost like a narcissist so yeah I didn't like the writing style of this and unfortunately I wouldn't recommend it. Next up I read a book that was highly recommended by Jess from Peace Love Books. It's called King of the Court by Oris Gray. Um, this is a sports romance, a uh, basketball romance where we have uh, an NBA player who is training for the Olympics. So they have this Olympics camp that they need to go to that is being organized in the middle of nowhere in Texas. So he goes there with his team and this is where he meets our heroine who works at the local diner. Um, at the first sight, they don't have a very nice impression. At least she doesn't have a nice impression of him because he made a snark remark about where they're situated and this is her hometown. Uh, but as the story progresses, they get to know each other and they fall for each other. Um, the interesting thing is that we get a very good backstory for both of the characters. First, really the backstory of the heroine is highlighted and then once we get a conflict within the book we start, we start to find out what his backstory is. So I really love that about the story. Um, the heroine basically she moved to her hometown because her only relative uh, with whom she's very close, her grandma, is very sick um, and she is moved home to take care of her and to uh, be with her as much as possible while she's still around. Um, she has a lot of financial problems so she's working uh, multiple jobs to get around. Yeah, when they meet there is this immediate attraction that they have but then the conflict comes up which is that uh, the hero Ben, his uh, ex-wife is actually pregnant. He didn't know that. She showed up and she basically showed that she's pregnant and um, yeah he, he he's not going to be going back to her but the hero, heroine doesn't know that so basically the whole situation explodes from there because there is a very big conflict that has um, come between them. So yeah basically um, this is how the story 
starts and then we see how the story progresses with him becoming a single dad and her having to deal with her backstory and how she is dealing with um, basically a dying relative. I did like this book. I'm not going to say that I didn't like it, but I didn't love it as much as everyone has loved it. Um, it's not that there was a secret baby that really bothered me within the story, but I think it's more that I was zoning out a couple of moments throughout the audiobook and also how the story wrapped up in the end. Um, I, I don't know, I maybe wanted a little bit more out of it. I don't know how to explain my thoughts on this one, but I did give it four stars. It had a potential of being a five star read, but there was just something that held me back from giving it five stars. So yeah, it was a very good sports romance, a bit of a different one. So uh, definitely uh, that's a plus for, for this story. And I'm definitely going to pick up more by this author because I did like the writing. So for the next story, I'm probably going to get a lot of hate <laughs> because I think that this is probably the highest rated book um, in the past couple of maybe year or so. Everyone has been talking about this uh, love story, basically. Uh, this is a YA story called Binding 13 by Chloe Walsh. It has an extremely high rating on Goodreads, if I'm not mistaken, 4.5 or something. Just bonkers. <laughs> it has a really high rating. Everyone loves Shannon and Johnny. And I started off um, not knowing anything about the plot. This is how I wanted to keep it. I did see that Tori from Novel Life and a couple of other uh, booktubers absolutely love this story, these books. Um, I also knew that they're quite long. I know that it's a duology and then there is now a spin-off uh, that focuses on other side characters within the story, within this world. But basically Shannon and Johnny's story is divided into Binding 13 and Keeping 13. And just to give you an idea, I picked up the audiobooks. Binding 13, the, uh, the story is broken down into two parts when it comes to the audiobook because it's quite long. When it comes to page count, it's almost 1000 pages and the audiobook part one is like 15 hours, part two is almost 11 hours, so that's 26 hours of listening time. And I was like, okay, I'm not going to have a prejudice that it's that long. There, there's got to be a reason that it's that long. So I'm just going to start it off. I don't know what it's about and I'm going to see how it goes. When I got through part one, I was already like, how am I going to get through part two? And then the second book as well, because the second book is also that long. Um, because basically what we have here is a YA story between a girl who she's been bullied. It's set in Ireland, by the way. She's been bullied at her public school and um, she convinces her parents or her family decides that it's not her family, but her mother decides that she needs to be uh, placed in a private school so that she doesn't get bullied. Um, so they pay a lot of money for her to get into that school, but her father is absolutely abominable. He abuses his wife and children. So he is very mad that they need to spend this money on her private school. Anyway, she goes to this private school and she meets Johnny there. He's a rugby player. He is a hopeful for actually joining the national team and some big, big kind of academy for rugby. And their meet cute is that he throws a ball the wrong way and hits her in the head. So he's kind of feeling very guilty that this has happened. And this is where the story progresses of her kind of getting into that school, making new friends, making connections with Johnny as well. They really become friends first, but we see that he is kind of starting to fall for her. She also has feelings for him because he's being very nice to her. But everything is moving in like a glacial pace. And uh, even though I love a slow burn, this was unnecessarily long. There were so many mundane little details that were just so unnecessary to the story. I think that if this book had been edited a bit better, it would have been not a five, but a six star read. It's just at some point, 
you know, character development, whenever there is a, the story is not plot driven, but character driven, that can get tiresome if it's done in such a lengthy detail. And this is where it started to get heavy for me. So after part one, I was like, oh, am I going to pick up part two? And I knew that I need to do it back to back because otherwise it's not going to have the same effect. So I picked up part two, I finished it and I was like, I can't do it. I really cannot continue on. I don't want to continue on with part two because with basically keeping 13, because I was drained. I was drained by this story. I found the couple very cute. I found that they had an amazing connection together. It was very swony and um, they did share a kiss finally in part two somewhere at the end almost. And yeah, I'm all for a slow burn, but this wasn't necessarily long. So I'm not going to continue on with keeping 13. It just is going to put me in a slump. I just feel it uh, because this already kind of drained all the energy from me. So after this book, I had to pick up a shorter book <laughs> because it was just too much for me. And I do appreciate why everyone loves this series, but this one definitely was not for me. Moving on, I'm just going to mention the couple of books that I had in the readathon that I participated in so you know that uh, you can check out that um, wrap up. Uh, if any of the books that I'm going to mention interest you, then you can go ahead and check out that wrap up video. The first book was my most successful book for the readathon. It was a five star read called Mr. Romance by Lisa Raven. Uh, the tropes within the book are enemies to lovers, kind of. There is a, a strange form of fake dating. Uh, there is the best kind of book boyfriend and a reluctant heroine. So a reluctant heroine who doesn't really believe in love and doesn't believe in what the hero stands for because he's a romantic. So yeah, it's such a good time. I love this book and I gave it five stars. The next one is a weird one. It's called That Time I Got Drunk and Saved a Demon by Kimberly Lemming. I gave this book four stars. It's fantasy par uh, paranormal, cozy, uh, kind of there's kind of a quest into the book and we have a heroine who falls in love with a specific kind of demon and there's amazing side characters within the book a lot of banter a lot of humor so it's definitely a good one next up I had a two-star read so I don't really recommend this one it's Natasha Madison's One Kiss it's a sports romance a hockey romance that involves a single dad and a woman who starts to work with him so kind of a workplace romance and they become friends first before they become lovers but this one was not a favorite of mine so if you like the kind of books that I like I wouldn't recommend this one. Next up we have Love Flushed by Evie Mitchell. I really like this one. It's um, a story that has amazing representation for chronic illnesses. Um, we have the heroine who has Crohn's disease and we have a story where we have childhood sweethearts to enemies to lovers again and we have also kind of a workplace romance because the hero and heroine kind of depend on each other their companies need to work together to get an ultimate result and i really like this one i gave it four stars and then next one i gave Four and a half stars is The Forbidden Man by Karina Halley. I love this book. It's a forbidden romance between an older woman and a younger man who actually work together. She's a physical therapist. He's a soccer star at the new team that she has started working at. And there is um, a slow burn forbidden relationship that I absolutely love. And I love the hero within the book. And yeah, it's a definite four and a half star read. And I definitely recommend this one. And then we had another book which was very interesting, one that was very unexpected for me called The Escape Artist by Kitty Thomas. This book I gave four stars. It was a dark captor, captive romance with a lot of BDSM elements within it. It was a very surprising read and I definitely encourage you if you like dark romances to check out my other video to see what the story is about so it may kind of pique your interest. Um, so these were the books that I finished within the readathon and then I also had one book that I did not finish by Tessa Bailey called Secretly Yours. 
because I didn't finish it, I'm not going to spend any time on it. Basically, I have figured out that Tessa Bailey's works are not for me, so I'm not going to be picking up any other books by this author because all the books that I've read by this author have been two star reads for me or DNFs. So yeah, this is all I'm going to say about Tessa Bailey's book. So <laughs> this basically wraps up all of the books that I have finished from the 1st of March up until about the 15th. And I'm really already looking forward to the next wrap up because I finished another couple of amazing books in the meantime. And I, yeah, I'm going to talk about those at the end of the month. In the meantime, I hope you enjoyed this video. I apologize again for my stuffy face and I hope to see you very soon in the next one. Have a wonderful, marvelous day. Happy reading. Take care and bye-bye.